both the best and the worst part of losing weight is uh, I am down a whole size on my jeans lately. Like, ah, no, don't leave me underpants. <laughs> oh gosh, it's <laughs> I really <laughs> I hate it and I love it, but you know I I didn't have to uh, undo the button either. But this is absolutely the worst part. Is like ah. Uh, sit my very bored deeds. Uh, Rowan do e. Uh, good morning. How's your day been? I'm Rowan. Or uh, if you want to be a real stickler about the Gaelic, which I know I like, my name automatically means I've combined two Celtic languages. The uh, second syllable in uh, Rowan should probably be Rowan. Uh, but I I'm like I'm I'm usually like just trying to aim for like what most people will adjust to, okay? Like, I, I can guarantee you, if I lived in a Gueltach region for more than a day, or, you know, like, and was, like, actively living there, I'd probably put extra emphasis on the second syllable. But people want to get on my dick on it anyway. Speaking of, uh, this is, like, the third time I've tried to, uh, do this video, because, um, long story short, I had a couple of different takes. The first was completely unusable, and the second was less that it was unusable and more that it was unusable with the current setup I've got for uh, recording videos. Uh, yeah, I said, speaking of my junk, which would not be like my legs where I'm rubbing psoriasis cream onto myself. Actually, it's like a technically a gel, you know, when you can, or I calling itself an ointment, or I guess the people who made the label are, because, like, if this started talking to me, I would be very disturbed, and I would probably talk to my mental health professionals about it. But that's another story for another time. In case you were unable to tell via here, I'm a transsexual man. Yes, I use the term transsexual, even though it's fallen out of disfavor with people younger than myself. Why do I say that? Because, one, I'm old. <laughs> like, I know I go on about this, like, all the time. It seems to be all I talk about is how old I am. But, um, to an extent it is true that, you know, I'm older than people who find, you know, the term transsexual somehow leaving a bad taste in their mouth. But, uh, reason number two is I find it a useful distinction in far more conversations than most people want to acknowledge, and that being that, you know, because it is, you know, considered as it sounds more clinical, I'm like, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, because, like, some people cite that as a reason for not being too fond of it, it's like, yeah, like, like we're going back to, uh, Kate Bornstein's, um, 1994 gender outlaw definitions, meaning that it does imply a certain clinicalness and in that it places a not always necessary but sometimes important you know distinction that there are some people in the trans community who th their best life can only be sought through seeking medical transitioning services and yeah like the extent to which one engages in that is completely up to oneself and like, like, as I've said to people before, like, transitioning is, you know, not a one-size-fits-all thing. It's going to work out differently for different people. Like, your needs are not necessarily going to be my needs and vice versa. Um, also, transitioning is not a race. Like, there is no, like, one set age to do this all at. It's just like, you know, being an old person, yes, I know about the, uh, the correlations of certain subcategories of trans people, which you know, may not necessarily be at all important if you ask me, but yeah, like I know that there some trans people don't, you know, transition until they're much older, possibly having some kind of midlife crisis, and I know that this is often associated with fetishism both in and outside the trans community, but that's a whole topic I don't feel is necessary to say here. No, what I do feel is necessary to say here is, um, oh gosh, I went off on somebody last week. 
please don't ask me the exact dates. I have, like, almost zero sense of time. It's an ADHD thing on it. But, uh, but yeah. So I went off on somebody for using the term transmasculine as an umbrella term that in their mind necessarily includes transsexual men, like, as in, like, our experience of our gender is best described as being on a binary that, you know, we do identify as men, and, uh, in fact, like, on second read of the screen caps I took, this person even says, you know, even, I think they're doing what I'm criticizing this term for. Now, this is a term that predates Tumblr. I remember seeing this term back on LiveJournal, you know, when people outside of Russia still used that with any sense of regularity, and... Oh, right, that's my towel. <laughs> Put that there on top of the clothes I'm wearing. But it didn't have a whole lot of traction on LiveJournal, which is fine, you know, like... At the same time, like, cisgender was a term technically coined by a cisgender, um, clinician, uh, I want to say 1890s Germany. Well, technically he coined the term cissexual. It didn't re really re-enter re the, uh, the lexic- it didn't really enter the English lexicon, nor did it start gaining much traction until the mid-1990s on Usenet, and then it, like, blew up all over the place. Uh... I first started seeing it on LiveJournal in the mid-naughts. So, uh, again, like, old people remember LiveJournal. Like, this is how old I am. So yeah, like I said, I first started seeing the term transmasculine on LiveJournal. <sighs> Little over ten years ago. Um, sometime between... Of course, this is probably when I was just, like, only, like, first conscious you know, aware of the term because of various groups and stuff, but it was, like, sometime between my, uh, my chest surgery and moving to Lansing with my best ex. So, uh, the whole thing with, um, I was not a whole big fan of transmasculine at the time, but at the time when I first saw it, and, um, so first I had my own ideas, which was... Is this a new non-binary thing? And then I asked the person who used it, Hey, is this a non-binary thing? And their definition certainly made it sound like that. But it was a term for um, people who were apparently female at birth, so AFAB, um, with the inverse being AMAB, apparently male at birth. Yeah, like this was for AFAB people who um, identified their gender as a masculine one, but not necessarily a male one. So they weren't necessarily men, but they identified with masculinity. And that was fine. That was fine to me. I thought that was completely fine. I saw no reason to, you know, have the deep hate for it that I do now. Because in the, sometime in the intervening years, I saw more and more people of, like, the type of the person I went off on the other day, who insists that transmasculine is an umbrella term for all people who are AFAB and identify their gender either on a masculine spectrum or identify their gender with manhood. Or more specifically, this person said, um, trans men and people whose gender is a masculine one or closely identified with manhood, parentheses like you, meaning me, meaning, like I said, <laughs> in hindsight, a couple days after going off on this person, it occurred to me, I think they were doing a weaselly misgendering of me when I said at the first use of their term transmasculine as what was very clearly an, an umbrella formation, that it's not good to include trans men under a transmasculine umbrella, because here's the thing, is like, when people do that, like I said, I have no problem with it being a non-binary identity, but, you know, when you're saying that trans men are necessarily included under that umbrella, 
This just works out to be a Weasley way of misgendering trans men, for starters. And then there's the fact that it implicitly holds trans men, you know, such as myself, to a standard of masculinity that, that I, I'm damn sure people who uh, use this term in that way would not hold cis men to. Now, they may not think they're doing that. They may believe that, oh no, this is just a completely benign way to refer to the wealth of commonality in the transgender spectrum for all AFAB people and, you know, conversely, AMAB for trans feminine. And I'm like, you know, intent is not magical. And I say this as somebody who has practiced magics off and on during his spiritual journey, as well as his trans one, wherein much of that overlaps. So, uh, so yeah, like, as any good magician, or even activist, like, activists say this a lot, that intent is not magical. But, yeah, like, any good practitioner of magics will tell you, intent alone is not magical. That if you, if you have intent and no action, nothing's going to happen with the spell you're working. If you have intent and perform the wrong actions, at best, things will coincidentally work out, but you're more likely to screw something up, and either nothing will happen or the exact opposite of what you intended would happen at worst. So, so yeah, like, <laughs> you know, like, in intent alone is not magical, so, like, people can say that, oh, well, you know, it's just intended to incorporate all these experiences into one, but, you know, the, the, the real world effects is that it's, it's very much a Weasley way of saying that trans men are not men, that our gender is only a masculine one, which therefore implicitly puts us at an obligation to perform masculinity in ways that people do not even expect of cis men, you know, who are gender non-conforming, such as Jeffree Star. So, yeah, like I said, like when, when, when they're doing that, it, it has this ripple effect and that goes completely against everything that trans men have been saying for decades, that, you know, we are men, we are not this, you know, fancy butch plus. And, you know, and, and specifically that person identifies themselves as a trans masculine butch lesbian. And I'm sorry, but my experience with my gender has crap all in common with any kind of lesbian. I, I, like, even when people want to say, oh, well, you, you were assigned a female gender at birth, and therefore you were expected to do all of this stuff. And I'm like, well, yeah, like, people like to really water down the whole socialization of trans people and our genders, like, pre, during, post-transition. But it's all, you know, it's always so boiled down to, like, some of the most basic statements on either side of the, you know, dialogue, or any side of the dialogue. I'm sure there are sides besides, you know, the two p primary ones we see on this, but it's like, w when you boil it down to, like, some barest essentials for one's argument, you're going to get things wrong. And the fact of the matter is, is that, like, mo well, first off, like, there is not a single trans person alive who does not have a complex relationship, you know, like, mentally, neurologically speaking, with, you know, the conflict of their gender and their apparent sex from birth, okay? Like, we all, we, we all have a very layered, complex, nuanced relationship with all of this. But then there's also the fact that I tend to be in the camp that roots for the, you know, hypothesis that attempts to answer why are trans people with neurodivergence, duh. So I tend to lean in that because, like, I've only been able to see the ways that that certain expectations people seem to have or certain things people seem to say was um, probably a result of misogyny, but, like, only in the last few years. Like, if you had asked me, like, when I was 20 years old and a good five years before doing anything about being trans, um, a good, you know, 20 years from now, uh, before now, and if you had asked me, like, any of this, like, and I was pretty well read compared to the average 20-year-old in certain, like, feminist ideologies and topics, it's like, 
I would not have been able to reconcile that, you know, as being a misogynistic act toward me. I was just surrounded by a bunch of assholes. And I can only really think about some of those experiences in an abstract. And so, like, I know, like, on an intellectual level that, you know, yeah, that's how people were processing the world, you know, or processing their experience with me. But at the same time, as um, Aristippus the Elder said, like, we are all incorrigible of our own experiences, meaning that there is some level on which we just cannot accept being wrong. And in my case, that has played out where it's like, I have this neurological block from associating what everybody else in the world is seeing from how I'm feeling. So that's just, that's why I lean on the neuro neurodivergent uh, side of things, because there's also the fact that, um, well, I seem to have a disproportionate amount of uh, friends on the autism spectrum. That could just be the social circles I run into, you know, technically, you know, like t people with autism tend to be a little bit more, you know, attracted to certain social circles, which is fine. Um, but yeah, like, I understand, you know, that that when people try and make autistic people um, respond to the world as if they aren't autistic, this causes some serious psychological trauma. And we also understand that when trans people are expected to live our lives as cisgender, this often causes intense psychological trauma. Like, um, and yeah, there are going to be some outliers who don't really come away deeply traumatized, and maybe there are reasons for that that still um, line up with them being either autistic or trans. You know, it could just be, like, a variant in the neurological side of things, but, like, that's just, that, that tends to be, like, you know, why I see it this way. is like, part anecdotal, part just, like, knowing how certain neurodivergencies work. So, wh when people are necessarily including trans men or trans women in the, you know, other side of things, under terms that were initially meant to, like, refer to a non-binary experience, okay? That, that, that just comes away as, like, such a weaselly way of misgendering people and hoping to get away with it because everything else that the person is saying is kind of pro-trans. But like I said, when you put it in context with saying, oh, well, all trans men are transmasculine because AFAB experience, and it's all the same for us all, all the time. And like, no, that really isn't, because like, it's discounting binary transsexual experience similar to my own as being one where either they're calling us liars or they just don't want to believe it for some other reason. Like, you know, it's like that whole, like, like either they're outright calling us liars or they're saying, well, I believe that you believe that, but this is how it really is. Like, like you don't understand your own social interactions that you've had your entire life, but I do. I'm not you, but I understand it better than you. So like, I don't know. That, that's just where I stand on the whole thing. And I, I know I've gone off on people before for referring to me as transmasculine. I know at least one of these people at one time anyway was still subscribed to my videos. And I, I, I understand that I have a tendency to go off on this because, like I said, it's, you know, at best, it is a well-meaning but ignorant statement about trans men who, you know, understand ours to be a binary gender, even if it is a non-conforming binary gender, such as my long hair and shiny things. I love my shiny things. Don't take my shiny things. I love shiny things as much as Mark Bolin and Freddie Mercury did, and Boy George, and because I, for a while, thought she was a drag queen, probably Annie Lennox. Oh yeah, Annie Lennox has been covered in shiny things throughout her career, but yeah, like, you know, like I said, at best, y y you mean well, but it's an ignorant statement to, you know, lump 
trans men as trans masculine or all trans women as trans feminine uh, because you know at the end of the day it plays out in either one of two ways when when you say that trans men are under a trans masculine umbrella or you know the inverse being like all trans women are trans feminine like it, it just comes off as a really weasley way of under of misgendering trans people more often than not though at best it can come across as well-intended ignorance like maybe you thought this was the right way to you know refer to things but now that you know please stop <laughs> right like like now i've informed you of better praxis in this so like just please stop like at most the terms trans masculine and trans feminine correlate with a non-binary experience like that is what they are for that is what these terms came into existence for to describe a certain experience that wasn't a binary one but was still meaningfully trans so uh so yeah like i said like now that i've explained it and why you shouldn't do it like please move forward and do better because like i said at best it comes across as well-intended ignorance but more often than not it just comes off as a really weaselly snide way of misgendering trans people whilst being performatively supportive you know so uh so yeah all right that wraps it up gonna go off to game night now which is why i didn't put on makeup because you don't need eyeliner to sit uh, i might need eyebrows to sit around with a bunch of nerds and play board games so uh as i tend to say um take care of yourselves including wearing your sunscreen uh as always there's the thumb icons below to denote your uh, enjoyment or lack thereof with this ranty chatty video time and it, you know there's also a subscribe button hereabouts uh, with a little dingy bell icon thereabouts relative to the subscribe button if you haven't hit those already and you want more nonsense coming out of an aging goth face hole in this manner feel free to subscribe and give yourself alerts and maybe your phone will scream at you when I'm doing stuff. And uh, if you have more dollars than cents, I've also got a PayPal tip jar and Patreon link in the description box below, or at least I've rem hopefully remembered to put those down there. And as always, bats and kisses, and I love you all, and goodbye! For now. Oh, yes, you're so cute, but I wish, I wish to make handkerchief edgings. May I make handkerchief edgings? Or are you just going to keep napping on the linen? Oh, look at this little noodle. Oh, oh, what? Too much light? Too much light for little Murnau's beauty rest? Maybe. Maybe just a little. Okay, here. Here we go, here we go. There we go. There we go. Are you a cutie? Yes. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, just such a cute little noodle. Just such a cute little noodle doodle. Yes. Oh, little cutums. Yeah. Hey, Nigel. Hey, love. Nigel, but who's my sweet boy? Oh, I hope the mic is picking up his heavy purr.
He just has the most soothing purr in the whole world, and it's so loud. The one time I uh, addressed my worst ex as lover boy, Nigel like popped his head right up and then slammed down a paw as if to say, "No, I am lover boy." Gorgeous, aren't you, Nigel? Hey, love. Hi. You're beautiful. Yes. Oh, we're best cat. I love you. Sweet boy. Nigel. But I'm not done petting you. Ugh. Nigel, don't leave me. Don't leave me, my love.